Now here on this picture, I just love this picture. It's so goofy, isn't it? Look at that giant hand on that little face. And it's kind of like what the abstract circuitry reminds me of. It just doesn't make sense necessarily. It's um, the idiocy of life can be seen here. You know, all of our experiences that make up what it is to be human. And we can, you know, maybe make sense of, not make sense of. We remember, we share, we feel, we believe, or we don't. There's all these cycles of experience that we see here. With the sensing circuit, which is a sub-circuit of the collective circuitry, here we have abstract circuitry. What that means is, is it's beginnings, middles, and ends. It's about being fully immersed in the experience. It's about the imagination to daydream something new. It's about actually having the experiences, many different experiences. It's about witnessing what happened. It's about mm, succeeding where others fail, discovering, or maybe failing where others succeed. It's about reimagination or telling the story after we've had the completion of the experience. And what do we have to, what is it our, our, our imperative, our genetic imperative to pass along to our other people in the life, in the world? The collective world is about sharing. And here we share what happened once we've made sense of it, or even once we haven't, we're trying to make sense of it. And that's why we share. Sharing is impersonal here. So if you've got a strength, look down at your body graph. If you've got a strength here in one of these um, areas, then this is a core component of what you broadcast or what you be. If it's your conscious personality, like it is mine, then this is going to be something that you are impersonally, I am impersonally sharing. And if it's your unconscious design, you're broadcasting that unawares. The personality construct uh, doesn't weight as heavily, W-E-I-G-H-T. It's not as important, we could say, as the design, the design, the form dominates. So it's gonna be dependent on your activations as far as how these show up. What I'm going to do is uh, try to describe to you the generality, the big picture themes of what these strengths, these channels might show up in your life like, in addition to um, describing a little bit from the famous raves that we see. So here on this slide, what you're looking at is the collective circuitry in totality. Again, the overarching supra keynote, you could say, for these sub circuits is always sharing. I like to think of it as the sandwich that kind of holds everything together. You can see it's um, on either side of the individual circuitry and it also holds everything, you know, as far as the outside of the, the body graph. Now these potential streams of awareness or part of the core uh, column in the middle of the body graph. These aspects of us are going to show up differently, again, whether they're conscious or unconscious. Here, the unconscious, depicted by red, is what we see as the abstract. Now, notice there's a little crossover. See the crossover? And then we have the conscious, where there's a crossover as well. How I remember which one's which is, you see how this person is facing future? And here's the splenic center. We know that's about the now, and also being able to have a tap into the taste of what's to come, you could say, or the logic of where things are going, where things are headed. So you can see it's facing future. That's where most of the logic is on the black. And then here's the past. That's where we came from. So you can see the um, memory of remembering things, core aspect, the memory circuit is here in this abstract circuitry. And we're going to dive into, just go right ahead and dive into channels in just a moment. You can see here we have this web that comprises of everything. I like to think of it not only as the stuff that holds us together as a collective society or species, but also, you know, connecting us to others, human creatures, humanity out in the world. We have both the understanding, which is logic, there again is the future. And we have the sensing, again, abstract, which is about the past, so where we came from. And that 
these both of them are major major circuits i have yet to see anybody who has all, uh, the entire any of the entirety of the major circuits i remember seeing somebody who had almost all of the ego sub circuit but never the entirety of any of the major circuits and this the collective circuit group is a major circuit but both of these sub circuits are also major because of how many channels there are so we have a lot to talk about today here's an overview now one of the things one of the keys to you making sense sensing making sense of body graph circuitry is to see it like a fractal Okay, one of the core elements of this, what formats this circuitry is the channel of maturation, the 5342, a design of balanced and cyclical development. As that formats the entire circuitry, I want you to know that all of these channels require maturation. Why? Because that's what formats them. So it takes entering into a cycle of experience through its beginnings and middles and ends. We know that this is about starting and this is about finishing to find the growth. So to extrapolate further meaning out into all of the channels in the sub circuit, it also means that any place you have activations, most especially if you have a full channel, it's going to take some time to get clear on things, even though it may not be connected up directly to the emotional system. As an example, if you look at abstraction, a design of mental activity and clarity, this is about the past confusions and the realizations through life's oppressions about what happened in the past. And that takes time, right? When we're born, we don't necessarily have much of a past. We're learning all along the way. So abstract channels as a group, as a whole, they go through a process of cyclical development where it's correct for us to be fully immersed in the experience. You can see the channel of discovery, 2946, a design of succeeding where others fail or failing where others succeed. Boy, doesn't it take time to enter into a process and then go through the middle and then come out at the end? Same thing here. But this is the most purely existential channel we have in the body graph. And what it's leading to is the prodigal design of a witness. Prodigal son that goes out, or daughter that goes out into the world, comes back with a story to, tale, to tell. <laughs> the tale must be told. We share our remembrances, our secrets. And what do we share? Why do we share? We share because it's built into our genetics. We have the start code on here in the 41. All genetic sentences start with the 41. We have two stop codons, 56 and 33. So it's always about going through a journey and adventure. This is why you see me uh, labeling my classes a lot of times as adventures. There are adventures in learning and discovery because that's what I love to communicate about. It's part of my design to help you get a good start, a start on a new journey that you can complete in order to discover something new, in order to learn about you and your process, your experience, your cycles of discovery. And these experiences through which we go, have you noticed, am I driving you crazy? Those of you with a lot of logic might be driving you crazy right now because I haven't touched upon everything. I'm going in through it, through this door, that door, the other door, this door, that door. That's kind of like how this abstract circuitry works. It's not one plus one equals two. It's one plus one equals a third thing, something completely different. And are you curious yet? your ideas and your ability to share your beliefs? Are you seeking? Are you searching? Are you curious? Is this the way that you speak? You might hear yourself say, I'm curious. And what's that all about? Are you wanting to maybe collaborate with people? Maybe you're a basic split. Are you wanting to share with the collective the journey of experience, the cycles of development after the fact, after we've processed, after we've made sense of it? Or do you have a recognition 4130 is an interesting channel because we have fantasy that is based upon what we've experienced in the past. We have fantasy that's driven to have the hunger of a new experience now. Channel of recognition is a design of focused energy that is about the strength 
of imagination to get somebody going on a new cycle of experience in order to feel new things, in order to make progress in the life. So we have last and not least, we have the manifester, the one manifester strength in this circuitry, where we have the channel of transitoriness, a design of a jack of all trades. Somebody who's good at a lot of different things, somebody who's talented at many different things. One of those things may be sex. This is a deeply sexual stream right here. It expresses through feeling. It's I am impersonal, impersonal. It's idiocy. This is the root of pornography right here, because this is a deeply, this is the only gate, 41, only gate that has sex with love, the drive, hunger for feeling, for sharing new experiences impersonally. So that's where we have people who maybe potentially like orgies or really not. Those aren't very comfortable. Three ways aren't very comfortable, are they? For us people who are projectors, especially. Oh boy, is that being human, learning through trial and error, learning through mistakes. The abstract sensing circuit is the human experiential way from that 41 to that 35, the one we were just talking about, human experiential way. We learn by experience. It's the showing the evolutionary journey of humanity journey of humanity where we have all these different possibilities in life that we could share or maybe we don't want to share have you noticed that life is unexpected oh yeah absolutely unexpected it's unexpected and like the ouroboros it symbolizes introspection in the sensing circuit the eternal return or cyclicality especially in the sense of something constantly recreating itself this also represents the infinite cycle of nature's endless creation destruction life and death the evolutionary spiral it's i like to think of it as a spiral rather than thinking of it as a circle or a loop, like a closed loop. I like to think of this not repeating new things. Oh boy, any of us in here who have strong abstract circuitry, do you like doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again? No, Ooh, give me shivers. We like to cycle, we like to evolve, we like to have new experiences, kind of like the third line, new and improved. No, nope. been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Let's try something new new positions, new places, new people, not the same old, same old. Okay. Very different than the logic. Here's the sensing circuit where we see we have no splenic center to alert us to the dangers. The mind is so transitory. Have you noticed? Just like the rest of the circuitry, feelings are transitory, experiences are transitory, orgasms are transitory stories, fables, movies, everything is transitory. That's the human experiential way. Now, you can see that we've got the emotional system here. And here's the emotional channel strengths that are abstract. But when you're looking at this circuitry, there's also the most deeply emotional mind up here, this stream of sensing. Time and perspective, looking back, into the past are a very important key aspect of the sensing circuit. Life is an endless progression, cycle after cycle, discovery after discovery, experience after experience, where hopefully we evolve and then we live to tell the tale or not. <laughs> not all tales are told, eh? Sometimes we eat the mushroom and oops, we die. Hopefully somebody will be around to witness and share what went wrong, what didn't work. The sensing circuit, the experiential way, shows the validity of where we came from, our past. This is the circuit that holds our history, our secrets. Gate 13. Yeah, the secret keeper. That's a secret keeper. 33, sharer. Okay, the whistleblower, person that actually shares what happened, what happened. This circuit is about educating us through what is important to keep as a history from our past experience so that we can learn collectively, share and grow. Think share with all uh, 
circuitry here with the understanding or sensing. Think growth as part of the sensing circuit. That's what ultimately we're all here for. Through our histories, you know, whether or not we won or lost, who wrote the tale puts their slant on what happened. So we'll never really know what actually happened through this history. There's so much stored history. Everyone, almost anyone has access to books, films, computer, TV, internet. This is transcending the tribe. This is the organic nature or process of the collective world. So if ever there has been a record of something, if it's ever been recorded, it's here in our blueprint, our genetic makeup, both in our designs and also in the world at large. We can find it most likely, unless it's like the Library of Alexandria where it's burnt down. We keep things, don't we, us humans? Each new life does not have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to learn everything. We can have this sensing circuit that is responsible for sharing, for storing, for recalling, recollecting the history of humanity. It benefits us all. It speeds up our learning process. And we don't have to make the same mistakes ourselves. Why it's so important to get a mentor in human design and to learn in groups. It's so powerful and helpful, isn't it? To have this journey shared, be shared with your family and friends if they're into it, but most especially our human design fractal family, where we can share and speak the same language and go through similar kinds of trials and tribulations where we can adventure and learn and grow and commiserate together. Isn't it fun? I just love it. Thank you for being here to share in this journey with me. So here's the, the shirt of the sensing circuit. Been there, done that, this is the t-shirt. Yeah, it's impersonal, but it happens to you personally, but then it's something to be shared. So this is the circuit group where we collect memory about our experiences, our feelings, our emotions. You know why we remember things? Because it has imprinted upon us this felt sense, this experience we remember through feelings. People don't remember exactly what you said necessarily, unless they have a really keen memory that operates in that way. But most people are more likely to remember how they felt with you. Yeah, maybe that uh, thing that was said was really hurtful or painful because of the way that you heard it or interpreted it. And then you remember exactly what they said. I hate you or you're such a liar you know, something that really feels like it's wounding. And through this journey of discovery, our memories come to the surface, bubble up to the surface for us to reflect upon, to become clear about. After time, everything within the sensing circuit needs to have time in order for us to reflect on the experience. Once we have had time and we've gotten to this clarity about the nature of the experience. What did you learn? That's the thing. Just like the third line, everywhere you see a third line, what did you learn? Teach all your third line children. What did you learn? Yeah, don't make the mistake wrong or bad. It just is what it is. And what did you learn? So too, with this abstract sensing circuitry, I want you to remember, what did you learn? What do you remember? What story can you share? This enriches all of us as a human species. The experiential way has a deep dislike for repeating things. Nope, we don't want to do the same thing twice. We want to try new things. So let's dive in to the channel of maturation, the sensing and sharing in the collective circuitry. This is a design of balanced and cyclical development through the gate of beginnings, which is about development and the gate of growth, which is about increase. When we go through a cycle of experience, this formatting energy, very powerful in a design that creates the beginning, middles, and ends as far as the frequency, going over the past experience based on our process, our journey, our very personal journey that is designed to be shared when you are abstract. So here we see maturation, the cyclical format, 
has this trait over here, which is in the quarter of the wheel, which is about purpose fulfilled through mind, the initiation of mind into the world of form. So this is the quarter of civilization. That's where the start 53 beginnings gate is. It's the cyclical format that creates the cycle of experience on the abstract path. And you cannot accomplish anything of value unless you enter into it according to your design and you complete it. You follow it through to the end, its natural end. It's critical to enter into a cycle of experience correctly. Otherwise, it's a waste of time and energy. Nobody wants to waste energy, especially time nowadays. Have you noticed? So many busy, busy, busy people. We don't want to waste any time. I want to get to the end and I want the growth. I was promised growth. I'm here for a reason. My reason is evolution. That's why here in the emotional system, remember the two channels that are there. Those are the emotional strengths that can create an authoritative process. But every single channel that you see that is abstract is also going to contain the emotional frequency, or you could say chemistry. That means then that all of these channels that we're looking at are going to require time to reach clarity, to go through the whole process, the whole journey. It's about the outcome, right? The actual experience that you share during your process. So now what happens? People are like, I want to know what's at the end of the book. Has anybody ever opened up the book and go, gone, oh God, I can't stand this. I just need to know what happens at the end. I was like that as a kid. I want to know what happens at the end. <laughs> and most people rush, 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 rush through life. They don't give life the time that it takes to live a rich and full life because they're hurrying. They're hurrying to grow up. They're hurrying to get their degree. They're hurrying to get their ideal job. Then they hurry, guess what, to their grave because they're not allowing themselves to take the time that it takes in order to live a rich and full life. Be present in the experience. Wait for the response, the energy. That's what this channel is about. It's building our world through generating the initiation of mind into the form, into the civilization, into the life, as far as our experience is concerned. The channel of maturation, 5342. We can call it the strength of cycles, cycles of experience. You can see that Aretha Franklin had this channel. And she says, if a song is about something I've experienced or that could have happened to me, it's good. But if it's alien to me, I couldn't lend anything to it because that's what soul is all about. If you have this channel as part of your design, your life operates in cycles with distinct, clear-cut beginnings, middles, and ends. New experiences that build upon the old. And by entering into and completing an experience here through response, you're designed to share the valuable lessons learned from the completed cycle. Once you've completed it, looked back on it, digested it, processed it, witnessed it, and then can tell the story of what happened. Now here's Andrew Wyeth. He was an artist painter. And when he stated about this corner farm, he painted many, many pictures of it, by the way. He said, I didn't think it a picturesque place. It just excited me purely abstractly and purely emotionally. Abstract people will process things in this light, in that light, in this way, in that way. This is the time that it takes. It takes the time that it takes to go through maturation. Think about the word mature, ma mature. <laughs> maturation. It takes time. Yeah. It takes time to go through the cycle of experience, to trust your gut response, this is still the authority process with this person. When you're starting something new, if you don't, you may become trapped in a loop rather than evolving out. Okay. If you get trapped, if you get stuck, if you get frustrated because you're limited and you're not able to complete the cycle of experience, you're not able to experience the growth then this is where you become trapped and frustrated, uncomfortable. 
So the key to all abstract circuitry is just being in the experience for its own sake. Let go of any expectations, trying to have something that is clear cut about, oh, if I do X, Y, and Z, that's when I'm going to get my reward. Or if I could do one, two, and three, then I'm going to get what I want. No, mm -mm, sorry. Abstraction is about life getting in the way. You know, there's the best laid plans of mice and men, and then we just have this <laughs> monkey wrench. Fate steps in, throws a, a hell, hell breaks loose, whatever the case may be. Something happens, you know, you can never expect and get exactly what you expect. And even if you get exactly what you expect, I expected to finish the Ironman triathlon when I was a kid, got there. But oh boy, the crash after that. When you have expectations, what happens is you lend yourself to be able to be open to frustration and disappointment. I wish I could get this or that. Yeah, I wish. It's an abstract thing too. And whether you get it or not, whatever accomplishment, whatever achievement you want to acquire or have in this life, there's still the crash. There's still the down. Yeah, this, it's on to the next thing. Why? Because we're abstract. Because it's the grass is always greener on the other side. This is the shit happens circuitry, especially with the uh, human experiential way. Now... Here's Maria Montessori, if you know of her. She created the Montessori method for teaching educating children. And she says, I have found that in his development, the child passes through certain phases, each of which has its own particular needs. The characteristics of each are so different that the passages from one phase to the other has been described by certain psychologists as rebirths. Another quote, the child wants to do and see and learn for himself, though his, through his senses and not through the eyes of a, an adult. The child who accomplishes this becomes a full person. He is educated. Let them go through their cycles of experience. Let growth take the time that it takes. You cannot force a rose to bloom, nor an acorn to flower or to grow into a giant old oak tree. Things take time to mature, grow, and prosper until they eventually decline and end, only for us to be rebirthed into a new form and to start the process all over again. This channel of maturation, Ra would say, it's a great art to be able to condense the past in such a way that it can be shared in the now and illuminate the future. This is one of the most special things about being human. It's not as though every child that is born has to begin from scratch when it enters the world. We all benefit from whatever human history we have access to, which speeds up our learning and our growth process. Now today, our collective process is moving faster and faster. We have a greater capacity to be storing and sharing all these vast amounts of history and information. You ever watch YouTube on two times speed so you can take in more hands up. I have, <laughs> you know, there's so much information that we could process. All of this resulting in the circuitry, the sensing collective abstract circuitry, deeply impersonally imprinting us, this world at large, this human collective experiential way. It's not about hurrying up and getting to the end. You know why? What comes at the end? Death. And you can't take anything that you have collected with you, except for your experience, except for your learning adventure and journey. Your human experiential way leads us to make progress in the life. And part of that progress is discovery. Now, this is one of the tantric channels. And this is also one of the penta channels, this channel of discovery, part of the sensing circuit, sharing as a super keynote. We have discovery, which is succeeding where others fail, failings where others succeed. The gate nine saying, yes, the abysmal. And the 46, the determination of the self pushing upward. The availability to respond, to be in the right place at the right time, which may seem like serendipity, but is actually derived from great effort, commitment to a journey of discovery. 
Okay? When you respond with this process, if this is your authority, you have the energy available to discover and to complete that cycle of experience, that discovery. When we look at this channel of discovery, we see where both of these gates are or in the quarter of the wheel, which is about bonding. This is the quarter of duality. So this 29th gate gives us the indication of the way we are designed to enter into a cycle of experience. This is the gate that says yes to life. And it also is the one that says, no, I'm done here. So in this sacral center, our energy is designed to be asked for available in response. This is a gate that only operates correctly when asked and when in response, the gate of saying yes, you need to be asked to know what to say yes to. It shows any abstract person, hi, that's me, where to commit their energy to. So it's important for an abstract person like me, is it you to enter into experience correctly? Very important. If we don't, we will be stuck in a cycle for a very long time. It may be really challenging to get out of it. This is especially true. If you are someone like me with that 42 in an undefined sacral center, okay, an undefined sacral non-energy type most especially so i'm talking projectors and reflectors you got a 42 and you aren't able to get out of the cycle of experience because you've entered into it incorrectly good luck to you my friend use your authority process depend rely upon your strategy attune to the integrity of your sovereignty the nature of being in order to get yourself out of that mm, stuckness, we could say that loop instead of cycling, cycling out on this evolutionary journey. So let's go look at some charts. Here we have Jane Fonda. You remember her? We have the channel of discovery, the strength of discovery. She had an arrest after protesting against climate change, and it caught the attention of President Trump who told a rally in Louisiana, they arrested Jane Fonda. Nothing changes. I remember 30, 40 years ago, they arrested her, he said. She's always got the handcuffs on. Oh man, she's waving to everybody with the handcuffs. I can't believe it. He added, every 25 years, they arrest her. And she says, the most important thing to do as you age is to stay physically active. Lots of people just throw in the towel if they can't do what they used to do. And that's terrible. Mm, I would agree, especially if you have any of the um, sports channels and if you have maybe an active environment, do stay active. She says it's never too late, never too late to start over, never too late to be happy. Here is a person who is designed to have potentially new discoveries in the form, in embodiment. 46 is about the embodiment, the love of the body, the embodiment in this form. It's great good fortune and good luck. Each of us are born into these lives that we are here now, isn't it? You kind of won the lottery, so to speak, of being able to be born embodied at this time in this space with this kind of dynamic that we're all living in the age of technology. Isn't it wonderful? It's incredible. And if you have this channel, you have the perseverance. Ah, that's me. Perseverance to stay with an experience until it is complete. If you enter into it correctly, every single one of these sacral generative channels have a certain kind of stamina. This stamina is through the gut response on a journey or a cycle of experience and discovery, allowing you to be in the right place at the right time. Hi, higher self, embodiment of one's higher direction in this form. Here we have Larry King, also with this channel of discovery, as you can see. Now he's an emotional authority, but still the body, the form dominates. This is a big part of who this person is, succeeding where others fail. There is nothing in your destiny, he says, nothing in your future that you cannot accomplish. There's the personal destiny of the three, five contagion success. 
basically satisfaction for him though basically what he says what it comes down to is i love what i do key for any generator i love what i do i don't do it for fame i don't do it for money i just love it and yeah can't you feel that when somebody loves what they do when you love what you do you're completely immersed in the experience it's like no time passes it's incredible what it feels like when you're doing what you love he says i never think of access or goodwill i just want a good interview that's really great those people with the undefined throat really know how to ask good questions don't they he says i want guests to be informative and entertaining i've never been concerned about someone's liking me tomorrow that's great to hear because oftentimes we know fives can mm, maybe get paranoid about what other people think of them it's good to hear with people who have this channel you must wait to be asked for a clear commitment even further wait further longer for clarity if emotional authority is your process this is vital to the satisfaction that you can derive from the experience through which you share your journey of discovery and the cyclic process of growth you must be able to lose yourself in the experience that thing i was just talking about not necessarily looking back until you come to the end of the experience in order to process, in order to make sense. You may not even ever necessarily make sense of the full sum totality of the life experience, your journey that you've gone through until death. And then we look back during our bardo state. Okay, things don't necessarily make sense while you're living it. Just be in the experience for the experience. Why are we here? The experience, the journey, the joy, the love, whatever it is that is yours in your design. Here's George Harrison. He says, it's being here now that is important. The purely most pure existential channel of this circuitry. There's no past and there's no future. Time is a very misleading thing. All there is ever is the now. We can gain experience from the past, but we can't relive it. We can hope for the future, but we don't know if there's, if there is one, we don't know. If you don't expect anything, life is one great bonus. Ooh, I love that. But when you expect anything, then you can be let down. If I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to be successful, not famous. That's not the key claim that they want here with this in authentic authenticity. There we go. So the end of the cycle of the journey is where you will find the ultimate discovery of success. Following your gut response, surrendering the expectations provides the potential to succeed where others might have failed. Carlos Castaneda that should not say channel of recognition. My apologies. Ignore that piece. We're still looking at the discovery. Nothing in this world is a gift. Whatever must be learned must be learned the hard way. Oh yeah. Especially in the first 30 years of his life, you can see he would have had to learn the hard way through not only what he was broadcasting, but also what he saw in the world. And that was his individual truth he says for me the world is weird because it is stupendous awesome mysterious unfathomable unfathomable there we go my interest has been to convince you that you must assume responsibility for being here in this marvelous world in this marvelous de desert in this marvelous time i want to convince you persuade you that you must learn to make every act count since you are going to be here for only a short while in fact too short for witnessing all the marvels of it. For me, there is only traveling on paths that have heart, on any path that may have heart, meaningfulness, I would say. And the only worthwhile challenge is to traverse its full length. And there I travel looking, looking breathlessly. Some quotes to get us in tapped into his frequency. So this channel of discovery, this strength, of discovery brings commitment this channel the only way you enter into this experience correctly is by letting go of any expectation 
when you have a response and the moment you let go, you can get to the other end. Because the abstract process is about the past, we cannot know anything about it in the now. It's not about now, it's the cyclical endings that bring the growth. We can only be in it in the now. Only when the experience comes to an end can it finally make sense. And so this is one of the most important aspects of the abstract circuitry because this channel determines the viability of the experience as well as its value in reflection. 29s are about committing or not, saying yes or not. It is a generator gate. It can only be accurate about its ability to complete the cycle when it is asked. It can't be accurate in any other way. And then we have the 46, serendipity, good fortune, good luck, the love of the body, where we have this being in the right place at the right time. And this is all rooted in the mother of all fears for survival. So succeeding where others fail, failing where others succeed. The secret is if you wait to be asked before you enter into the experience, then you will be 100% committed in that experience. This is the learning process through sharing the journey that is fully immersed in that process as it's happening. Okay, one moment. Let's discuss the channel of the prodigal, part of our sensing, sharing. Here we have a leadership strength in a group of three to five people. We have the 1333 prodigal design of a witness, which combines our listener with also privacy. So we have the fellowship of man, and then we have retreat as far as our process here. And here we have this journey now that's Strider. I don't know his birth time. I didn't look it up, but just to be an archetype of what this is, you know, witnessing going out, prodigal soul, son going out into the life and experiencing things, coming back, living to tell the tale, coming back to share in the journey, the experience. We have the beginning of the quarter of initiation, purpose fulfilled through mind, combined with the end of the quarter of civilization, purpose fulfilled through form. And so when we get to the potential of the expression of the circuit, the abstract circuitry, this is part of the memory circuit as well, this witness consciousness, which is an abstract part of being human, which is about sharing the journey. This is a gate of revelation, gate 33s. Hi, nice to meet you. It's incredibly spiritual. It's a gate of remembrance. It's a gate of revelation. It's a gate of witnessing life. The abstract, remember we began without expectation. I'm going to get this. Yeah, I'll do this in order to experience that. Mm -mm. We got to let go of that. But then when we get to the other end, this is the end of that experience. When we've entered into it correctly, we discover that the reward is never the same as what our expectation was. We learn here that it is far better to see and just be the witness of an experience than to expect something specific from an abstract cycle. You can't, right? It's better to wait and see what the cycle brings rather than suffering because we, you know, we want to experience something specific if we don't let go of the expectations. So we suffer, the mind suffers when it doesn't appear to be fulfilling the expectation of the journey. I can remember before human design really being disappointed with my life, who I was, what I was doing with my life. Is this all there is? Why is my life like this? Yeah. So the gift in this here now, this experience is to reflect on what happened and the lessons of the past. That's when we have our, you know, beginning secrets of the past that get us back into form in order to share the journey, the cycles and remembrance and impress upon the next generation what we must keep and store as a memory in order to share in that journey, to learn from the experience. 13 is the hearer of secrets. This is what begins the reflective process. It takes in all the memory and then it expresses it through the 33. 
Now, 33 is high, very private people. It is about retreat. So our reflection of the experience itself has to take place outside or after the experience, you could say, in the calm after the storm of the journey of the maturation process. This is a projected channel, so it needs to speak when it's recognized, when it's invited. Now here we have Barbara Streisand, such a beautiful gift to witness it alive in the world. You have got to discover you, she says, what you do and trust it. Yeah, speaking for self-satisfaction as all self-projected projectors do. She says memories may be beautiful and yet what's too painful to remember, we simply choose to forget. So it's the laughter we will remember whenever we remember the way that we were. If you don't know of her, she is a song singer songwriter. And there's some beautiful uh, additional quotes from her journey that speak to the nature of this unexpected leader by looking at the past. So people who have this, if you have this, you have the ability to not only listen to secrets, but to store information, to gather memories from which lessons may be learned from the cycles of experience and the journey of discovery. So you can retreat and reflect on the experiences that you have yourself witnessed, also what other people share with you. And you can patiently wait for what is beneath the surface to reveal itself in the form of a collective direction or a journey of discovery that leads us to course correct based on what happened in the past. That's what these people are spokespeople of, spokespersons of. Another one is Whitney Houston, channel of the prodigal strength of witnessing. She says, being around people like Aretha Franklin and Gladys Knight, Diane, Dion, sorry, Dion Warwick and Roberta Flack, all these greats, I was taught to listen and to observe. She says, I almost wish I could be more exciting, that I could match what is happening out there to me, the personality designed to be enthralled with what happened. These are our natural record keepers, our writers, yeah, singer songwriters, authors, think bard, you know, back in the day when the bard would wander around strumming his whatever for his meal, singing songs. These are the life stories that are shared, the histories of everything around you. It's not about revealing your secrets before their time. So we, re we remain private until it is time, but it's also not about the vast swing to remaining so private that no one will ever hear our stories. This is about sharing because it is a strength. So being able to share in the journey, the cycle of experience, the cycle of discovery, comes through a response if you are a sacral generated. Yeah, through response, to be a witness. Here's another one, Louise Hay. Isn't she a beautiful woman who not only created her own story and put it out there into the world, but facilitated other people to share their stories. She has a publishing company. She says, that's the way life works. Gratitude and appreciation just brings more goodness. Remember, everything we give out comes back. Gratitude has all sorts of little surprising rewards. Remember, you have been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. She says, every experience I have is perfect for my growth. Beautiful way to approach life. Timing is everything with the circuitry. Remember we think one is about timing, yeah? The first line is about timing. The abstract circuitry, when we have had time to process, when you're invited with this channel, you can share a great wisdom gained from our shared experience, our journey of discovery. Your voice says, I remember, that's the voice with this patient reflection that often comes and reveals through which you've processed the deepest truths in our collective history. And it is your job description to share what you have learned. 
Remember, when you look at a body graph and you see these channels, that's your job. That's what you broadcast. It's who you'll be for yourself if you're generative, for others if you're projected, and so forth. So now we go into the solar plexus awareness stream of feeling. Oh boy, we have all kinds of fun, juicy stuff in here. We begin with the fuel, the energy, pressure to feel or not to feel. The 30 is the potential awareness to recognize or not. Recognize what? A feeling, a fantasy, a journey of discovery, imagination. We move through the solar plexus and it becomes the possibility for awareness and power to create feeling or not. The possibility of expression of a feeling, the 35 says, I feel. This is the mechanical manifestation, it's a manifestor strength, of a feeling or not. It's the gate of progress. To be clear, it's the human experiential way here. All of this, the human experiential way, begins with a start code on. It ends with making progress or not. What have we learned along this journey? Here's our channel of recognition, the sensing and sharing circuitry, where we have the 4130 recognition. It is a design of focused energy. The 41 contraction is the gate of decrease. The 30 is the recognition of feelings, the clinging fire, the gate of the fates, the gate of desire. So we have this powerful strength that is deeply tied to our emotional creation of experiences. We imagine based on the fantasies of the past and what we imagine might create our feeling of fullness or satiation. The emotional system, as you might recall, if you've gone through human design training, is about full or empty. Yeah, this is about desire and passion and need being full or empty. So here, it's a drive to feel things deeply in order to learn, in order to, ah, there's the word, grow. That's what this channel is about. It's projected. It must be recognized, invited. If that's your only channel. The strength of imagination. Now look at this. Now we have a new uh, area to talk about. 41 is at the end of the quarter of mutation, purpose fulfilled through transformation. That's our start code on. That's when Pluto hits there. That's where we're going to have the new journey around the wheel our new transformation into a new kind of human species as a collective. And then we have the 30, which is about your um, initiation of the mind into the world of form through desire, fantasies, fate, feelings. The most important difference between this abstract way and the logical way is that the abstract easily can manifest because it has more access to energy than the logic. Okay, logic is kind of starved for energy over here. This is not energy, this is. So we have direct connection of energy to the throat or communication and action in the world of form. The abstract side has its own talent. We have mirror on the other side. This is a talent for accomplishment for abstract people. To accomplish something literally means to be able to complete it and then move on. That's clearly not the focus of logic. Logic is repeat, 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 perfect into a talent until it becomes an art form. That's not the case over here with imagination. Remember I said grass is always greener? Yeah, because you've got this experience and now what's next? What's next? What's next? It's kind of like the sixth line where the sixth line is looking on to what's next, so too abstract can get caught up in that what's next thing. I've done there, been there, done that, what's next? Okay, let's look at some charts. Here we have Lewis Carroll. You guys remember what he wrote? Let me give you some hints. Actually, the best gift you could have given her was a lifetime of adventures. And a quote in one of his books, why sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. 
And another thing, those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Oh, I love magic. I love stories. And this is part of my stress relief. I've got this channel myself. Being able to immerse oneself in the magic of life, life experience, adventures, journeys. You know, when you have this channel, we have the ability to use our focused energy to fantasize about countless scenarios. Could this be? Could this be? Could this be? We have an endless hunger, a longing, a yearning for new experiences. And so our dreams, our desires, our fantasies, get a fantasy, can create expectations that maybe in the hands of fate, may or may not be fulfilled. Ra would give you a little trick to help you see which is your way to deal with fate. Gate 30, the gate of the fates. Look at your fifth line quality here in this case, whatever your personality construct is, it's your conscious personality's way of dealing with fate. Whereas the body, the body is the life after all. Remember the body has its way of dealing with fate as well. That's your frequency. Here we have Albert Einstein, also with the channel of recognition, the strength of imagination. He says, a man should look for what is and not what he thinks should be. This is the acceptance or not of what is. Life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. <laughs> I love to travel, but I hate to arrive because once I'm there, I always want to go back again or somewhere else. That's what I, my personal ad there. <laughs> the most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious, the magic, the wonderment. We have restlessness built into our genetic code with this, my friends. And it's best experienced by balancing our patience, because we're always going to be emotional, self-control, you could say, to be able to allow yourself to have time to get clear on decisions. So the secret to harnessing this strength or taking advantage of it is to simply enjoy the dreams for the daydream's sake. And every experience that is correct for you to journey into, do not give in to the pressure of trying to have to must should, making all of your dreams come true. Not only is it messy, but it's impossible, and not all of them are going to fulfill your fantasy or your expectation. I can tell you, been there, done that, some of the things are best left in fantasy land. It's about, here in his case, when asked, in response, can empower individuation through sharing his imagination on a new cycle or journey of experience. And this is part of what he gave to the world. Imagination, very important, so strong in this person. Here's Carl Jung, also with this channel. He says, the dream is the small hidden door in the deepest and most intimate sanctum of the soul, which opens to that primeval cosmic night that was so long, so long? I might not have that correct. That was soul. Primeval cosmic of night. Oh, I get it. Primeval cosmic night that was soul, comma, long before there was conscious ego and will be soul far beyond what a conscious ego could ever reach. He says we cannot change anything unless we accept it. Another key, accepting what is releasing expectations. It allows the experiences that you enter into correctly to be more fulfilling, our reflections to be more poignant, and sharing our dreams more likely to stir the feelings of others. As somebody with this channel, I can remember my first um, in-person class. I was auditing and taking it from Beth Black, the LYD ABC cartography in an eight-day experience in person. Oh boy. <laughs> um, she reminded me about this channel, how it's better to write, to daydream, to process, enjoy the fantasies for what they are, and not try to initiate them out into the world. But wait, wait, wait. For me, waiting for recognition, invitation to share the daydream, the fantasy. 
for caller Jung, it would be waiting for the response and good clarity, both of us clarity always. Now the channel of transitoriness next in this stream, sexual stream, deeply sexual, sensing and sharing, we have the 3635 transitoriness is about our feelings and our experiences. This is such design of a jack of all trades, someone who's good at a lot of different things and the strength of the experiencer. We begin with crisis, the darkening of the light, crisis of inexperience. Do I have what it takes in order to get to progress at the other side? The gate of change, the gate of progress there, the expression trait, encouraging change in progress, manifesting change in progress in this respect, because that is a manifestor strength. And here we can see where we look in the body graph, we have initiation of mind into form and the process of civilization, manifestation of civilization into the world of form as a strength there. So it's deeply impersonal, simply there for the experience. We keynote this again, crisis, and most people will misunderstand this keynote. It is inexperience, which brings crisis, doesn't it? Have you ever tried to do something new? Imagine driving your car for the first time. I had my child this past weekend park for me for the first time. And yeah, there's a little bit of nervousness that comes up when you have this inexperience. When you are, and if you are inexperienced, you're always going to be drawn into a natural process of seeking experience our first bicycle ride, our first lover, our first job, our first day off at school, whatever it is, we're drawn to seeking experience because that's what we as human creatures do. And in going from inexperience to achieving, accomplishing, remember this is about accomplishment and off to the next thing, crisis is natural as part of that journey of discovery. So this is a manifesting channel where we have emotional manifestation, a deep potential for power that is either peaceful or angry. Nothing can be done because this is emotional until one has waded out the wave, that crash wave. This is the most important thing about the human experiential way. There is no experience that is denied to, no, to us. Everything is a potential isn't it somewhere, somewhere, someone is living something that is the sum full totality of what we humans as a collective could experience. So here we have love him or hate him, Donald Trump, the strength of the experiencer. He says, I try to learn from the past, but I plan for the future by focusing exclusively on the present. That's where the fun is. Ah, yes, I love that. If you reduce tax rates and you allow people to spend or save more of what they earn, they'll be more industrious. They'll have more incentive to work hard and the money they earn will add fuel to the great economic machine that energizes our national progress. The result, more prosperity for all and more revenue for the government. Now that is definitely speaking on the side of capitalism. We can see that he has a significant portion of the stream of capitalism. He says, get going, move forward, aim high, plan a takeoff. Don't just sit on the runway and hope someone will come along and push the airplane. It simply won't happen. Change your attitude and gain some altitude. Believe me, you'll love it up here, here where he has achieved or accomplished. So, with people who have this strength, you may try anything and everything in order to get things moving in the direction of what? You guessed it, change and progress, because that is what this person is broadcasting. That is what you are broadcasting, if that is your design. So Alexander Graham Bell also had this strength of experiencer. Man is an animal witch alone amongst the animals, refuses to be satisfied by the fulfillment of animal desires. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. The inventor, he says, looks upon the world and is not contented with things as they are. He wants to improve whatever he sees. He wants to benefit the world. He is haunted by an idea. And you can see that was definitely true for him. 
speaking for the collective nature of the circuitry. When one door closes, another door opens, but we so often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the ones which open for us. Remember the ending, the cycle of experience, the cycle of the journey. These are people, if you have this, you're driven to seek collective wisdom from shared experience that promise something new. Remember to better improve upon your work and life in the collective world. It's about progress. So rather than letting uh, yourself feel let down by a new experience that maybe fails to meet your expectations, remember, secret key, let go of expectations. The talent you can develop here is about embracing and living fully in this moment, living the experience, each experience for the experience's sake. Because once we've been there, done that, we can go off on an adventure to a new experience. 35 is a gate of progress. We can also say boredom. I'm bored. I want a new experience. Yeah. So it's about living fully, embracing the experience and the adventure. Here's Anne Frank. She says, everyone has inside of him a piece of good news. The good news is that you don't know how great you can be, how much you can love, what you can accomplish, and what your potential is. I don't want to have lived in vain like most people. I want to be useful or bring enjoyment to all people, even those I've never met. I want to go on living, even after my death. She says, I don't think all of all the misery, but of the beauty that still remains. And whoever doesn't know it must learn and find by experience that a quiet conscience makes one strong. When you have this channel, your potential life accomplishment, remember it is about achievement, is that you are here to live, but also feel many things from which you have gleaned wisdom about that you can make available to others when it's correct for you, for her in response with emotional clarity. So feelings, again, like experiences are transitory and we share the experience in a kind of seize the day way when you have this channel as a strength. Now, Tommy Lee Jones says, I've always told my children when they whined, only the boring are bored. <laughs> it's new experiences after all here. He says, it makes me feel like a very special person that I'm able to make my living with my imagination. I developed a big respect for my calling while I was in school, and it remains with me to this day. I like to call this one we're going to get to soon, reimagination of new experiences. This is the imagination strength down here. What's the expression of it? It's up here. Now, the key for the transitoriness, people, is not to make impulsive decisions. Do not make impulsive decisions. Wait out the emotional wave. When you are nervous, that is a signpost from your body to wait. And here we would inform those who are impacted by our decision before taking action, because this is a manifester strength. Here we have a manifester for Tommy Lee Jones. Now, our last circuit stream of awareness, we have a mental uh, stream of sensing when it comes to this aspect of the circuit. We're going to begin with the fuel. In a body graph and an individual, we always begin with the pressure, move through the awareness function and into the expression in order to find an awareness stream. So the fuel of the 64 is of confusion. It's the pressure of mental activity or not. Then we have the potential awareness to be aware of or recognizing what makes sense or not in order to have that abstract cyclical process of awareness come to fruition. We move through the Ashna center, which is our conceptualization process into the possibility of the expression of awareness. It's the awareness to visualize a realization or not. And then we move to the expression trait where we have the 56 manifestation as a verbal description of realization or not. This is the entire stream of sensing and awareness. 
And it is about going through a cycle of experience, processing to come to an awareness, to come to certainty that is shared through instilling faith or hope or belief by sharing what we have learned from the past experience that helps us make sense of how confusing and potentially painful life can be of all of the mental channels. This is the most emotional mind as far as its memory. I want you to go back and remember a time in your life when you experienced some kind of really painful relationship suffering. Someone broke up with you for the first time or you broke up with someone and you really didn't want to. Do you remember what happened? Is it like a jumble in your mind? What happened first? What happened next? It's all confused in there. We can sort through, sift through the meaning, find the, the belief, the, the new idea to stimulate a new story as we move into the future. It's a stop code on that 56. We come to the end of a cycle and of an experience and a journey of discovery. We share what we've learned through stimulating stories that foster a new belief. And it begins with the channel of abstraction. The 6447 abstraction is a design of mental activity and clarity, where we begin with the confusion of the pressure before completion of a cycle of experience. We have this meeting up with the realization or realizing of life's oppression and our fear of futility. And it's kind of like, I put this image here because it's like a movie where we've cut up all the little parts and pieces. If you are young, you don't remember, this is what movie reels used to look like. And this channel is about sorting and sifting through all of those little pieces rather than it being in a clearly wound spool the way we, we get it at the movie theater. So this channel of abstraction is very unique in that you can see where its two gates are right next to each other. That means then that it has a very deep connection within itself, chemically, biologically speaking, within that channel. This is about duality. It's about our history, our bonding history. To make sense of the past experience, this is where it is in the body graph is through uh, duality, purpose fulfilled through bonding, as far as where these gates are in this quarter of the wheel. So we have this mental process of the abstract circuitry, part of the sensing stream of awareness. And as we move through life, an abstract mind will take in everything through the left eye. Literally the gate of the left eye is the 11. So we look back into the past. You want to look into somebody's soul, soul gazing, look into their left eye. Okay, that's going to go into the right hemisphere of the brain that sees all things as sequences. And then those sequences are stored in a jumble, yeah, collected in varying degrees, depending on the emotional frequency of how you took in that experience. And as we recall these sequences, they, these sequences, they flow through the 64th gate. They create a pressure in our mind. We're either going to call it inspiration or we're going to call it confusion. It's the pressure, pressure to question where things have gone, what has happened in the past. Confusion is always there as a pressure because the mind has to deal with information that isn't ordered. We're talking about the experience, so it doesn't seem to make any sense right? Certain things the brain categorizes as more important than others and might be much closer to the surface and definitely out of sequence compared to the being born and growing up and then dying. So the abstract way, what it does is it tries to fill in the gaps. That's why history is never accurate. Your memory is never accurate. When The moment you recall something, it shifts because of how you're processing in that moment. History is always subjective because we only know certain facts, dates, you know, places, maybe sometimes people, the rest we try to fill in as best we can. So the way we can understand our ancient societies is about creating a civilization by filling in the spaces of what we think may have happened, we can postulate has happened from the 
clues that history has left. I wish I'd put this other picture of Joe Biden. You know that really confused look on his face that he makes that people often make fun of? That would have been perfect for this image. My, my daughter has this channel. She came up with this word confuzzlement. It's like the difference between confused and, you know, just fuzzy. Channel of abstraction, a design of mental activity and clarity. Joe Biden quoted the Irish poet in his Democratic elections victory speech. He said, I truly believe that it's in our power for the first time in a long time because of what's happened in the last three years, the power to make hope and history rhyme. That's what we're going to do, promises the undefined heart center. And for too long in this society, we have celebrated unrestrained individualism over common community. Mm, the, it's very, very abstract. This human being is more about the collective rather than the individual. He says, I know I don't say, sorry, he didn't say I know. He said it down there. He says, I don't say very much. I don't really think through. Oh, that is so him. My daughter just says the same, does the same thing. These are people who think through their process of um, communication. I know that sounds inconsistent with Joe Biden, with his undefined throat, attempting to attract attention. The strength of experiential mental processing, you could call that. So he is someone, and if you have this, you do too, experience mental pressure to use your conceptualization process to make sense of the past in order to gain new perspectives on what has happened. This is, both of these are mental projected channels. So they're going to be about seeing big picture viewpoint on what happened in the past. Halle Berry, a mental projector herself, you can see with the channel of abstraction, 6447, design of mental activity and clarity. On receiving the Oscar said, this moment is so much bigger than me. This moment is for Dorothy Danridge, Lena Horne, Diane Carroll. It's for the women that stand beside me, Jada Pinkin, Angela Bassett, Vivica Fox, and it's for every nameless, faceless woman of color that now has a chance because this door tonight has been opened. She says, if you set out to do something and you give it your all and it doesn't work out, be willing to modify your goal slightly. Have the ability to look in a different direction. A small shift could guide you to the real purposes of your life. This is someone who is designed to have a very busy mind that never stops playing with the possibilities or potentialities to find meaning in what happened, the past experiences, where things may go based on your realizations or recognitions with awareness. Here we have Pablo Picasso, another mental projector, similar design, although very, very different as we know. No two designs are exactly alike, no matter how much they may look similar on the surface. He says, the world today doesn't make sense, so why should I paint pictures that make sense? Ah, that makes sense. He says, I don't believe in accidents. There are only encounters in history. There are no accidents. He says, there is no abstract art. You must always start with something. Afterwards, you can remove all traces of reality. So this is a, a being, and if you have this, you are too. A mind that can experience considerable mental pressure and confusion as a result of the constant swirl of images that are moving through you as you contemplate the past experience, this confusion, it's designed to mark the beginning of a new and potentially inspiring intellectual journey for you and for others. If you've taken my ABCs and my cartography, you remember how the 64 is called before completion. Before, and yet it's at the end. It's the 64. In the cycles of life, all ends in the spiral of life. All ends are beginnings. The new beginning where it goes into 63. Doubts about what may or may not happen in the future. One more. We have Joan Rivers with this channel of abstraction. She says, don't follow any advice, no matter how good, until you feel as deeply in your spirit 
as you think in your mind that the counsel is wise. Ah, what a Buddha-like saying. Yeah, I read history, but it doesn't make you nice. Hitler read history too. She says, that's history. Happiness is when you're too busy to wonder whether you're happy or not. Ah, that's nice. I like that. That's good for her as far as I see. The strength of experiential mental processing requires patience with your discovery process. Remember the discovery, the process of going through the cycle of experience, through the imagination, through the experience. And then over time, you share your perspective when you're invited. In this context, response when emotionally clear. Okay, last channel, channel of curiosity, sensing and sharing. Here we have ideas. The 11 is the gate of ideas. The 56 is stimulation. Curiosity, a design of a seeker or a searcher is not about finding. But these ideas, they may or may not communicate in a way that brings about peace. The stimulation or storytelling may be able to impart a lesson through this person's wanderings through life. These are people, all people who have defined ashnas, people who like mm, categorizing. These are storytellers though, not the facts and figures on the other side. So it's about maybe what people have said or what you have experienced. And the most important thing you can do to encourage a person like this is to ask them to share what happened during that day. What is the story? What happened, the experience? If it's correct for them, yeah? Ask them to, to tell the story, to share their beliefs. When you have this fixed here, what you believe to be true is true for you. And we can see that the 11 is in the quarter of mutation, purpose fulfilled through transformation, meeting up in this channel with civilization, purpose fulfilled through form. The seeker, not the finder. We have nothing to be found here because it's not about accomplishment in the same way when we had energy to communication and action. No, this is about turning light into sound formula frequencies. The 56, all of these metamorphic gates are about turning light into sound in order to stimulate others on our journey. Remember what the entire sensing circuit is about, experience for experience's sake. This channel, very emotional mind channel, is about teaching from experience rather than generating or creating from the experience. It's about the ability to tell the story about the accomplishment making sense of things. It's not the accomplishment itself. It's an important thing to remember that all of these channels up here have no access to energy. It's not about making anything happen up here. It's about communication. It's about communion of one self-reflected consciousness to another, either through the experience or the questioning of what may happen or the knowing in the now of what's happening. So when we go back to 11, this is ideas, a teaching gate, and the 56, it is sequencing of storytelling, fashioning it into something that stimulates other people to look at things in a way that fosters belief because we have the gate of beliefs. 56 is about taking the bits and pieces. We weave that information into a story and you elaborate on them. You fill in the gaps. That's the storytelling gift. It's not about facts and figures. It's different from the other side where we organize things into a logical sequencing. No, it's a rich tapestry of stimulating the imagination through reimagining fantastical ways of educating people. Mm. This is like our fantasy novels that tell us and the moral of the story is, you know, it's not about the facts. It's about bringing the story to life in order to teach others. Remember, stop codon at the end of the genetic sentence, 56 and 33. Benedict Cumberbatch. I love doing impersonations of people. 
beautiful for him, hey? Storytelling gate. I'm interested in art for all sharing. I don't want to be the Oh, don't want it to only be the sons and daughters of Tory MPs who get to see my plays. He's collective, after all. He says the further away you get from yourself, the more challenging it is. Not to be in your comfort zone is great fun. He finds it fun. And if you are like this, you're compelled to continually seek mental stimulation and be entertainment through exploring ideas and ways of seeing the world around you. You might have a fear of not having something new to be stimulated by, but your own process and your own journey of discovery, your own response in this case, will help you stimulate through storytelling the world of others in order to teach. It's not about finding something specific, remember releasing expectations, but rather look at what I have experienced and discovered and what I've learned through that story. Ursula Le Guin, still with the channel of curiosity, she says, we read books to find out who we are, what other people, real or imaginary, do and think and feel is an essential guide to our understanding of what we ourselves are and may become. She says, I talk about the gods. I am an atheist, but I am an artist too, and therefore a liar. Distrust everything I say. I am telling the truth. Mm, the beauty of paradox, I would say here as well. Truth is a matter of the imagination. Everyone has their own individual truth. It's another thing I might say. These people have creativity or a style of presentation, you could say, that's magical when they weave together the ideas and stories based on the past experience with the philosophical reflections about what it means to be a human being experiencing this human life, where it is chaotic at times and confusing. Charlie Chaplin, remember uh, of the clown, the fool, the idiot. This is the idiocy of life. He says, you'll never find a rainbow if you're looking down. <gasps> I have something to share about that. I just discovered yesterday. My daughter and I, we were thinking, why are we always seeing the same rainbow in the same place every time there's a storm? And she looked it up. And apparently it's always because the sun has to be shining in that direction. And so when you're up in an airplane, my friends, guess what the shape of a rainbow is when you look down? It's a circle. <laughs> so this actually isn't true unless you're up in the air looking down through the cloud. You'll find a rainbow in a circle when you're looking down. <laughs> Random. Okay, so what do you want meaning for? Life is desire, a desire not a meaning. <laughs> Why do you need a meaning? The experience for the experience's sake. Let us strive for the impossible, he says. The great achievements throughout history have been the conquest of what seemed the impossible. These are people, if you have this, you are a person who has a gift for taking abstract ideas, those stories, and believing in something makes it true for you. And you are less interested in facts than in how your stories can share your experiential view of life, your philos philosophical bent with that channel. So nurture your 1156s if you have one in your life through their storytelling. Again, ask them what happened, encourage them to write, encourage them to share. Maybe they like to do poetry or music or just whatever it is talking. They have to be able to tell their stories, even if they're only half truths. It's the art of the storytelling that is important for being like this. All right. In Shakespeare's circuitry, this was inspired by somebody I saw just uh, typing it out in a Facebook page one time, and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. That's a nice way to recap. We're going to recap here. We're almost done. Shakespeare's circuitry. Integration would be about to be or not to be. Individuality is everything else here. It would be 
to know, okay, or not to know, <laughs> to center, if we could take it even further in the sub-circuit of the knowing circuitry, or not to know. Okay. Now, technically, integration is not a channel construct. Integration is a super channel itself, when you see all of those in the design. Now, next, we have the collective, which is about to share or not to share. We just completed the abstract sharing collective circuitry. To share or not to share. It's been my pleasure to share this with you, my friends. I hope you enjoyed that. And then we have the tribal. To have or not to have. You could even say to hold or not to hold. <laughs> to smell or not to smell. And if you know a little bit about your circuitry, you know why I'm saying what I'm saying. All right, my friends, this is the end of our presentation. I'm going to take a break and say bye for now. No questions today, but I do want to engage you in coming into this class if you would like to with us. Again, we're at www.humandesign.live where we have these kinds of classes, lots of IHDS courses, and until next time, bye for now. Namaste.